Welcome everyone to another video from the Garish Crackle. Today I'll be doing René Magritte's Life in Surrealism. Magritte was born on the 21st of November 1898, the eldest of three children in French-speaking Belgium in Lessing. His father was a financially successful manufacturer and could afford to send Magritte to schools like Académie des Beaux-Arts in the capital Brussels in 1916. However, before that, a younger Magritte had to endure the trauma of his mother's suicide in 1912. It is believed, although contested, that Magritte was present when her body was recovered from the river she drowned herself in and was witness to her and her nightgown that had shrouded her face. Whether it was a conscious effort on the part of the mother or the currents of the river, Historians surmise that it had a profound impact on Magritte and influenced the subject matter of many of his works. The Lovers or Les Amants is an often frequently cited example. When referring to his experience in the Académie des Beaux-Arts, Magritte is quoted saying, Every bid for artistic freedom has been scoffed at from the general public, end quote. And you'll find the link to this and other quotes in the description box below. Magritte felt frustrated that there was still so much to explore as an artist. His initial foray into artistic freedom came about during his conscripted time in the military. Here he was introduced by fellow draftee Pierre Bourgeois to recent paintings by Italian futurists. He then somewhat imitated Picasso's cubist futurist style seen in a piece The Three Nudes he created. Yet he still did not consider himself to be an orthodox futurist. Accordingly, quote, I was intoxicated. I painted a whole lot of futurist portraits. However, the lyrical freedom that I wanted had at heart a constant preoccupation, quite alien to the futurist movement. This was a pure and powerful emotion, eroticism, end quote. At the age of 24, he was still searching for his voice and hindered by financial constraints, he took to painting roses on wallpaper. Frustrating work for an artist such as Magritte although not a total loss, as roses feature often in the subject matter of his future paintings as a surrealist. It was at this time that he came across Giorgio de Chirico's Song of Love. This was a piece that galvanized him with such ferocity that he began and finished pieces in one day subsequent to its viewing. Chirico was an artist 10 years Magritte senior and was the founder of metaphysical paintings and was exactly the inspiration Magritte needed to proceed along the course of surrealism. The um, two paintings from Giorgio de Chirico in this video, I've noted them to be Chirico's, otherwise every other piece is Magritte's. Magritte had reached a sort of artistic crescendo within himself. A climax of experience cocooned in enlivened expectant energy. His initial pieces, The Lost Jockey and The Menaced Assassin, were the first to present a perplexing relationship of images on a two dimensional surface, ordered in evident incongruity. The spectator is not able to sum up the narrative conclusively. Here he came to recognize his form as surrealist and often fellow mates of the same order would frequent his home where they would discuss the structure and symbolism of this, their revolutionary style. He showcased The Lost Jockey in 1925 and The Menaced Assassin in 1926. He reproduced the themes of The Lost Jockey, rearranging and redefining it over the course of his career. The Menaced Assassin is believed to be designed around a scene from a Louis Fouillard's 1913 film, The Murderous Corpse. Magritte was an aficionado of film 
and thoroughly delighted in and frequented many of Fouillard's pieces. These are scenes from The Murderous Corpse and you can see how Magritte drew inspiration for The Menaced Assassin. The Menaced Assassin, along with The Secret Player, were some of the largest pieces painted by Magritte and were displayed in his first one-man show which took place at the Galerie La Centaurie in Brussels. The size of the pieces is significant not only to capture and emotionally transport the spectator as one experiences in a movie house, but also to make the stand that he was Belgium's leading surrealist artist. During the war years, he remained in Belgium, going through a slight impressionist phase, which, with the advice of his friends, he stopped. Briefly after, during 1947 and 1948, he attempted to introduce Fauvism in what is now referred to as the Vach period. He then quickly returned to the surrealist style which suited him the best. It was during the 50s and 60s that his work rapidly gained notoriety and was adopted into popular culture. He then died in Belgium from pancreatic cancer in 1967 at the age of 68. And that is René Magritte's Life in Surrealism. The focus for me was René Magritte as an artist and not so much the biography. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. Have a lovely day from the Garish Grackle. Goodbye.